Hey, Studio 45. Wow, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're so glad that you're watching. We're going to have a great time today. We are talking all about the big idea of initiative, which is seeing what needs to be done and doing it. And whenever I think of initiative or the word initiate, of course, the thing that comes to mind is always the countdown sequence right before a rocket blasts off. Isn't that always the best when they're strapped into their seats and you're like, in eight seconds, this thing's going up. And so that's why our theme this month has been ready for launch. And so uh, we've had some fun things for you to do. We've got another fun activity for you guys that you can do at home with just a few simple supplies. What you'll need is a, a small bottle like this uh, that has a pop open cap like like this, that part's very important. Uh, we got these from a gas station, so uh, you can find them there. You'll empty all the liquid out. The juice isn't the important part, it's actually the bottle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a rocket out of this. Now, any rocket that wants to initiate and blast off needs to have good rocket fuel. So our rocket fuel is very simply Alka-Seltzer tablets. Huh? How nice is that? So these little guys right here are really awesome. They're made up of sodium bicarbonate, which when you mix them with water, uh, creates a, a chemical reaction and it's gonna build up some pressure and that pressure will actually uh, provide the fuel for this thing to go up in the air. So uh, what you'll do to get this ready, first off, you don't need this clear cap, so you can take that off. You'll unscrew the lid like that. Uh, and then you'll pour in some water. Now here's the fun part, okay? You can figure out how much water is gonna help it react the most. So you can uh, play around. Does it need a lot of water? Does it need a little bit of water? I'm gonna fill it up uh, a little bit here. There we go. I think my hypothesis is that we're gonna see if leaving enough room for the air in there to, to expand gives it a little bit more thrust. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, so then the other thing that you do is you take your tablet. Now, what you're gonna do with this, now that you've got your tablet and you've got your water, uh, I'm gonna head outside in just a minute and show you this reaction, but you'll break your tablet in half uh, you can drop it down in there. It will create the reaction and make sure that the, the top part of the lid is pushed down really firmly. If it's not, it'll just kind of fizzle out. It won't really give you that blast that you're looking for. So you will screw on the lid very, very tightly. Get that and then you'll turn it upside down and we're going to put it inside of another glass. That way it will shoot straight up. So uh, go get the supplies you need. Have some fun making this. We're going to show you what this looks like with the rockets that we tried here. Five, four, three, two, one, fire! Well, hey, that was awesome! Wasn't that so cool? Uh, I remember when I was in fifth grade, I would do this all the time. I used film canisters to do it. So much fun. I don't know about you, but whenever it gets off the ground, you just have that moment where you just kind of want to celebrate a little bit, you know, kind of throw the hands up and, ah, oh, I did it. We've achieved it, right? And uh, really, that's actually a really important thing is to celebrate uh, amazing things when they happen. And uh, today, our story is about how we can celebrate all that God is doing in our life. And when we do that, that helps us not miss out on what God's doing. And so uh, Jesse has got an incredible incredible message for you guys today, so check it out. The Bible is more than a single book. It's a collection of 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry written by dozens of different authors over thousands of years that all come together to tell one big story. It's a bigger story than you can even imagine. It's a big story about a really big God and what He did to rescue us. It shows us who we are and what we were created to do. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey everybody, I hope you had fun making your rocket at home, or if you don't have the stuff, I hope you have fun maybe getting the stuff that you need later and, and making it with your family and having fun seeing how high you can get it. I know it was a lot of fun for us to see uh, how high we could get those bottles to fly. Uh, but right now, we are going to wrap up our story about Nehemiah. If you've been with us either in person or online this month, you know that our big idea is, of course, initiative. And initiative, we define as by, as by saying it's seeing what needs to be done and doing it. And specifically, we've been telling the story of Nehemiah, which, if you know, it comes out of an Old Testament book called... Nehemiah. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool because the book of Nehemiah is kind of like Nehemiah's personal journal. Now, we're going to tell a story 
But before we do, can I ask you a question? Have you ever like done a really important job or, or, or done an assignment for school and then you forgot a really important part that you needed to do to finish it? Like maybe uh, you made a diorama and you did all that stuff, but then you forgot to put your name on it. I know that happened to me when I was a kid. Or uh, maybe it's a chore at home, like you took the trash out, but you forgot to put it in the actual dumpster part and so like a dog got into it and it spread it all over the yard. That actually happened to me as well. Or the most recent one, just the other day, I went to go get gas and I pumped the gas and it was wiping off the, the front of the window and the, the windshield to clean it up and I cleaned the back and then it was all done. So I got in my car and started to pull away <gasps> and I realized the gas uh, nozzle was still in my car. That would not be good. So I immediately stopped and said, wait a second, I forgot something really important. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever saw what needs to be done, but then you, you maybe you started to do it or you got really far in doing it, but you forgot something really important. Well, today we're talking about something that I think, honestly, Mr. Jesse has a really hard time with forgetting. I can tend to forget this. But what I love about the story of Nehemiah is Nehemiah didn't forget one of the most important parts. Now, just to recap, in case you haven't been here, the story of Nehemiah goes like this. Uh, it's in the Old Testament. And if you didn't know, the Old Testament is really a lot about God's chosen people, the Israelites, and how God would use them to bring the most important person to ever live, Jesus Christ, onto the pages of history. The Old Testament sets up the story of Jesus. It's really, really cool. Now, the Israelites were God's chosen people, and back then they would live in big cities that had these big walls around them. We talked about this, but because they didn't listen to uh, God, God comes along and he allows the enemies to take the Israelites and take them into captivity. And so uh, we hear how the Israelites chosen people in Jerusalem, that was kind of their capital city, uh, the big wall that surrounded it was torn down. Now, we talked about that. Nehemiah, years later, he finds out that, the, that some of the Israelite people have been allowed to return to Jerusalem. Some of them uh, were kept there and they're living there, but the wall never got rebuilt. And so Nehemiah hears about this and is heartbroken because he knows back then a wall around a city was a really important thing. It kept you safe. It helped protect your family. It helped protect your town. It helped you uh, build things. It helped you accomplish things because you knew that you could do those things without fear of uh, those things being stolen. And it was really important. And so Nehemiah hears that the wall has never been rebuilt. He sees what needs to be done and he does something about it. So we have been talking this month about how he built the wall. Now, what is really amazing about the story of Nehemiah is the fact that Nehemiah saw what needed to be done, and we've talked about some of the obstacles he faced, but he faced the obstacles that came his way, including making sure that people were treated the way they want to be treated, including making the wise choice and not getting distracted. We talked about being distracted last week, but Nehemiah and the Israelites end up finishing the wall. In fact, we even heard how they had to build. Some of them built the wall with one hand, and the other hand, they had weapons to help defend themselves because their enemies did not want them to build this wall, but they built the wall. Now, let's talk a little bit about that wall because when you read the story of Nehemiah, you might not realize how big of a project this was. First of all, let's talk about how long was the wall. Nehemiah and the Israelites build a wall that's 4,018 meters long. It's two and a half miles. So that'd be like if I went out and said, hey, we're going to walk from Studio 45 all the way to McDonald's, but not the McDonald's that's just down the road at Greenwich. We're going to walk all the way past Webb Road. We're going to walk all the way past the Andes uh, ice cream place. We're going to walk all all the way past all of that stuff, and we're going to the McDonald's on Rock Road. Now, if I told you, maybe you came here on the weekend, and they said, hey, we're all going to go get ice cream at McDonald's. You might be excited until I told you that we have to walk two and a half miles to get there, right? That's a long ways to walk. And Nehemiah and the Israelites built a wall around Jerusalem that would be two and a half miles long. Wow. That's a long way. Now, technically, the, uh, it's 2.6 miles to McDonald's. So it's a little bit over, okay? But you get the point, right? That's a long wall. Now, let's talk about how 
tall was the wall, right? How long was the wall? It was two and a half miles long. How tall was the wall? Well, the wall was about 12 meters, which would be about 40 feet. So uh, if you've been to Studio 45, we could use that as kind of a benchmark for us, right? So hey, there I am. Uh, From the front of Studio 45 all the way over to this brick wall, that is 42 feet, 42 feet. So it's a little over how tall it would be. Another way you could put it is this way. It would be three Studio 45s tall, okay? So if you ever come into Studio 45 on the weekend, it's 13 feet to the ceiling tile from the floor all the way up to the ceiling tile, 13 feet. You take that times three, three Studio 45s, that's one, two, three. Three Studio 45s would be 39 feet. So that is how tall this wall was. That's a tall wall. Now, that's not the only dimension because we also need to talk about how thick was this wall, okay? So the wall uh, that they built around Jerusalem, two and a half miles long, it was 40 feet high and it was eight feet thick, meaning that if this was the inside of the wall, this is a true eight feet, I measured it out this week, uh, that would be the outside of the wall. Now imagine this. Nehemiah and the Israelites, they worked together and they built a wall that was this thick. It was 40 feet tall and it was two and a half miles long. That is a big project. Now, Let's talk about, in fact, if you're watching at home, I'd encourage you to do something. Grab a piece of paper, grab your parents' phone, and write down what you think or how long you think it took Nehemiah and the Israelites to finish this job. Remember, we've been talking about initiative. We've been talking about working hard. They were definitely working hard. Uh, Here's some comparisons for you. Okay, we're in Wichita, right? And so if you're watching in Wichita, you might be familiar with a place called the Interest Bank Arena. The Interest Bank Arena was built uh, several years ago. I think it was finished in 2010. I'm not exactly sure on that, Uh, but it was finished uh, and it took exactly three years and 28 days or 1,123 days from them breaking ground to them finishing the building and opening the doors for the first time. Now, that's with modern equipment. That's with modern, like, tools. It's with trucks and cranes and all that kind of thing. Obviously, it was a big, that's a, that's a big building, okay? But uh, let's, let's do another comparison. You ever been to New Spring on the weekend? Uh, let's look at New Spring. New Spring, we broke ground in 1997, okay? These are some early pictures of New Spring, and it took us a while to finish it. In fact, it wasn't finished until 1999. So we ballparked it at 760 days from us breaking ground to us finishing the project. Okay, does that give you some idea? Now, again, that's with modern equipment, and that's with like tools that you could plug in, right? This was Nehemiah's day. This was, they had hand tools and they had to work with their muscles. They didn't have trucks. They had animals to haul stone, right? And again, remember, two and a half miles long, 40 feet tall and eight feet thick. Okay, have you wrote down your guess? Have you guessed how long it takes Nehemiah and the Israelites to finish the job that they had in front of them? They did finish and they finished in 52 days, not 52 months, 52 days, meaning that if September 25th, okay, the day that this video will drop, if you were to go 52 days from September 25th, it would be November 17th. It wouldn't even be Thanksgiving yet. Imagine if we grabbed all the kids in Studio 45 and said, we're going to build a huge wall and we've got to get it done before Thanksgiving. That would be crazy, right? Okay, now, maybe you're hearing this and you're thinking, Jesse, how does this have to do with initiative? And I'll admit, 52 days, that's impressive. But what does this have to do with me? Well, can I read a little bit of Nehemiah to you? This is really cool because this is Nehemiah's story. Remember, it's kind of like his journal. And this is what he says in Nehemiah chapter six. He says, all our enemies heard about it. All the nations around us became afraid. They weren't sure of themselves anymore. 
Now, Nehemiah could end the chapter there. He could end his book there. He could say, hey, I set out to do something very important, and I accomplished it with my, you know, my, my friends and my community. They helped us, and it was great. But Nehemiah does something really important. He says, they realized that our God had helped us finish the work. See, Nehemiah understood the only way they were able to accomplish this huge job, two and a half miles long, 40 feet tall, eight feet thick, was because God helped them. And so Nehemiah worked with the Israelites to build the wall, but then he does something really, really important. And I think it's worth pausing to talk about what that is. Before Nehemiah goes home, remember, he left his job. He went to, he, 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 he went to the king. He said, hey, I need all this stuff. And he would, he would leave. He would go to this place and help Jerusalem get that wall built. But when he gets there, he, when he finishes the job, he doesn't immediately run away. In fact, Nehemiah does something that I think I'm quick to forget and I think is almost one of the most important parts about initiative. Now, in Nehemiah chapter 8 tells us, Nehemiah was the governor, and Ezra was a priest and a teacher of the law. Listen to this. They spoke up, and so did the Levites who were teaching these people. All these men said to the people, this day is set apart to honor the Lord your God. Now, what does this mean? Well, what Nehemiah did that I'm talking about that's so important that Mr. Jesse often forgets is after the wall is built, Nehemiah doesn't just pat himself on the back or pat the other Israelites on the back and say, all right, we accomplished the job, let's go home. Nehemiah does something really important. He takes a man of God, a man of God named Ezra, and he has them get up and read to the people of Israel God's word because Nehemiah wanted to make sure that the Israelites gave all the credit for what had happened back to God. And so he has Ezra come along. Ezra reads the word of God to these people. And as Ezra reads the word of God, this would have been, this would have been basically our Old Testament. As, they, as he reads the word of God, the Israelites realize that they had not been doing what God had asked them to do. In fact, that's why they had been allowed to be taken into captivity. And they start to get a little depressed and sad, and there's weeping and they're crying, and they're thinking, why have we done this? But Nehemiah and Ezra and the other Levites, they, they say, hey, this is a day set apart to honor the Lord your God. Nehemiah and Ezra both encourage him. So Ezra and Nehemiah both, they stop and they say, hey, this day is about God and what God has done. So listen to this. He says, so don't weep. And don't be sad. All the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. And then it continues. It says, Nehemiah says, go and enjoy some good food and some sweet drinks. Send some of it to people who don't have any. This day is holy to our Lord. So don't be sad. The joy of the Lord, oh man, this is good. The joy of the Lord makes you strong. And the Levites calmed all the people down, and they said, be quiet. This is a holy day. Don't be sad. Now, why is this so important? Well, Nehemiah would continue. They did something called the Festival of Booths, which was really, really important. See, in God, when, when, when uh, God led the Israelites out of Egypt, he actually set up a lot of ways for them to stop what they were doing and celebrate and celebrate what God had done and what God was doing. One of them was called the Festival of Booths. And what they would do is they would set up these kind of uh, tents, basically, uh, outside, and they would sleep outside, and they would enjoy, and so uh, they would take this time to celebrate together. It was called the Festival of Booths, because they'd build these little booths that were kind of like tents, and they would stay in them, and they would use that time for several days. They would celebrate. Imagine this. Imagine, you know, last time, last party you went to. Maybe it was a birthday party. Maybe it was a wedding, you know, it probably happened and it uh, lasted for a couple hours. But imagine this, God had set up for the Israelite people to have parties that lasted for days. I mean, like sun up, sun down, these people are still celebrating. But why is that? Why was that so important to God in the Old Testament? And as Nehemiah had them finish the job, why was it so important to him? Because I think when it comes to initiative, seeing what needs to be done and doing it, one of the most important things that we can do is to see what needs to be celebrated, specifically how we need to celebrate God. I mean, 
Think about it. Isn't it interesting that we live in a culture that um, really, it loves to celebrate. But the truth is, I don't know that it always celebrates the right things. Like, for instance, the day this video drops, it is September 25th. And that, if you did not know, is National Quesadilla Day. Yeah, there is a whole day set aside to celebrate cheese and tortillas. That's it. Or on Sunday the 26th, it's National Pancake Day. Now, I love pancakes and I love syrup, but there's a whole day to celebrate it. And maybe you're thinking, okay, Jesse, I'm never celebrating National Pancake Day. Are you sure you're not making that up? Someone made it up. But here's the thing. When it comes to celebrating what God has done, the truth is sometimes Mr. Jesse struggles. I only do that around Christmas time or Easter time or maybe when someone's birthday comes along. But the truth is seeing what needs to be done means sometimes stopping and realizing that I need to give credit to God. I need to give credit for all the things that he's done for me. Remember how we talk about you can trust God no matter what? And maybe when we say that, that's hard for you to believe. And the truth is, Mr. Jesse doesn't know what you're going through. But can I tell you, the reason why Mr. Jesse knows that I can trust God no matter what is because when I stop and look around and see all the things that God has done for me, they really start to add up. I mean, God has blessed me with a beautiful family and God has blessed me with kids and and God has blessed me with a job that I love and, and God has blessed me with a beautiful sunrise this morning and a beautiful sunset this evening and God continues to bless me every day. Just think about it. When you breathe in and you breathe out, God allowed you to do that. Can I jump forward to a verse in the New Testament? This verse comes from Jesus. Jesus actually said this, and I think it is the perfect way for us to end our big idea of initiative. Because again, initiative is seeing what needs to be done and doing it. And one of the most important things we can do, of course, we want to see what needs to be done for other people and treat others the way we want to be treated. And of course, when we have something that we need to focus on, we don't want to get distracted. We want to make the wise choice and we want to work hard on those things. But one thing Mr. Jesse wants to be better at about is celebrating the fact that I can trust God no matter what, and celebrating the fact that God is at work in my life. In fact, uh, the verse that I want to read to you comes out of the book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 40. And what was happening is a bunch of people were celebrating Jesus as the Son of God, as the King of Israel. And the Pharisees came along to Jesus and they said, hey, you should tell these people to stop. And Jesus says this. He says, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. What he was saying is, hey, it is something that needs to be done is our God needs to be worshiped because he truly is worthy of it. And I don't want anyone else to have to see what I need to be doing and have to do it for me. I don't want stones to cry out for me. I want to tell others how valuable God is to me and all that God has done for me. And when we do that, when we practice that kind of initiative, I guarantee you it'll change the world. Let me pray for you. God, I pray for every kid watching. I pray that they would stop this video. And as they go out, they would stop and think about all the good things you have done for them. And they would take time to celebrate who you are and what you've done in their life. And we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Jesse, for that amazing talk. It uh, was really, really encouraging and really challenging. And uh, one of the questions that you brought up that I wanted to share with you guys is the question of the day. So, reveal the question. The question today to talk about with whoever you're watching with, your family, your friends, your dog. No, I'm just kidding. The question is, what is God doing in your life? that you can celebrate. Isn't that such a great question? Take time to think about that. When you realize that God is working in your life and uh, you do that, that is gonna give you a, a great, great attitude and a great perspective on life. So answer that question, talk about it. Uh, we would love to hear what your responses are. So you could even have your parents send us a message on Facebook so we can hear about it. We'd love that. Uh, but uh, just take time to think about that and realize that you can take initiative by celebrating how God is moving in your life. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tune in next week for a brand new big idea. It's pretty sweet.